Oh, hey there. Welcome to the one and only talk show on BTP7 and the first ever educational IELTS show right here in Vietnam, where we will help you to maximize that score and at the same time, maximizing your fun. I'm your host, Phoebe Tran, and this is Sam IELTS. On BTP7, a one and only talk show will help you to get to a band score by chatting about IELTS star, challenge him, and also time with celebrity invited to the studio. Experience shared by our IELTS spirit. How Harry Lou does IELTS. Lot of fun, lot of excitement. Let's follow our host to be trained to the studio of Tam IELTS. Hi guys, welcome to the Tam IELTS studio. And of course, before we find out if it's luck or not luck that our IELTS star achieved that amazing result, let's take a look at who he is. And he's actually right here in the studio with us right now. He's over there. But of course, before we get to talk to him a little bit more, let's take a look at who he is in the following clip. Does. Right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You know what I called you today? Mm, to share some experience about the IELTS? Yes, and I also called you the IELTS Superstar. Mm. <laughs> Not sure you, I deserve that title, but thank you. Because how many points did you get for the IELTS? Well, I had 8.5 8 in 5. general. Yeah. How did you get that point? How did you get that many points? Oh, I'm not really sure how, but uh, I just try my best. Actually, before I took the IELTS, I didn't even know how, ex uh, how much it is the exact score that I'm going to have. I, I just aim general direction so I, I want to achieve somewhere in the high band score of the IELTS but I don't have a limit for myself and then after I took the IELTS after I read the result I got a big surprise so that's a good thing so what, what was basically your expression when you got your score wow that was you, like run around the house you tell your mom it's like hey mom I got 8.5 I, I did I did do all of that but before I do that uh, uh, that was a moment that I can I don't think I'll be able to forget I uh, just uh, I just burst into tears right there before the computer screen because uh, before I took the IELTS, uh, one of my friends showed her score on, on Facebook. Just days before I took my real IELTS test and she got 8.0. And she was a very, very, very good student in, because we studied in high school together. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, um, I don't think I'd be able to achieve such a high score. I think, okay, maybe I'll be not as good as her, but at least I'll try my best. And then I took my IELTS test. And I had 8.5. So and then you had 8.5. Right? 8.5. So that was a big surprise, a big moment for me. And I just like burst into tears, happy and, and, and surprised and just so proud of myself. And I just, I went speechless for a moment. And then I, I savored that moment for a few minutes. And then I did all, all the things that you did. I ran around the house and I, I told mom, I yelled at my mom, that, Dad, mom, Dad, I got 8.5. Like it's so, so amazing. Oh, jumbo, a big delight that I, I still remember clearly like yesterday. You know, we, we think you're amazing too. And that's why you're here. And that's why we have so much spotlight on you. Do, okay. do you like our spotlight? Our so spotlight? many of them, right? Of course I like it. It's still amazing. So what did you do right, do you think, think uh, in order for you to get that score? Well, of course, uh, hard work and uh, willpower should be the key word. Uh, I think IELTS test, uh, as well as any other test, um, is a test of your ability uh, and your skills. Uh, you can be born with a little bit more ability than other people, but at the end of the day, it's the people who work hard who achieve the best result. And in order to work hard, you also need willpower because um, big success comes after a long journey of improving and improving yourself. So in that journey, it's not going to be a very, very, very easy road. Sometimes you get bumps, sometimes you fail, sometimes you just you hit some failure and you just want to give up. That, that's, that's when you need willpower. You just hit yourself. Yeah. I know that eventually I'll get there. I think willpower is one of my strongest assets, and I think I owe a lot of my success owe to my willpower, don't due to my willpower. You know how I can see the willpower in you? Mm, how? Throughout the time that you, were, that you were talking to me, you were looking at these IELTS books. Huh. Yeah, you looked at it a lot. <laughs> and and it, did looking at the books, or you know, did, did basically the books help you at all? Back until 2013, uh, two years ago, I didn't even know what the word IELTS stand for. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even sure in the IELTS was 
was the E comes before the L or the other words. That's how clueless I was. And then I, I pick up the first book. I, I remember that was the Cambridge practice test for IELTS number five. I pick up the first book. And then throughout my long journey, basically the last two years, there was like countless books, more than I can count. So I read books after books after books books with my friends, and I owed a lot of my success to, to my books as well. You know what you can do also? Okay. To all those fans that follow you on Facebook and to all <laughs> the ones that like, you should sell your books to them. All right. With the highlights. So it's, it can be like, you know, the Bindad books of art <laughs> with regards to the IELTS. What do you think about that idea? All right. That's, that, that might be a suggestion. I'm not sure I'll be confident enough to do that. But uh, yeah, if that helps and if people want, oh, that's too arrogant. But. Why, why not? It's a good idea. All right, so, so what, what's your routine leading up to the exam? Just tell me in five sentences. Five sentences? Yes. Oh, that's hard. Uh, my routine for the exam in two months, I uh, sum up in two words. Uh, half the day is devoted to writing. So I basically, I examine uh, every, candidate, uh, every um, sample essays to find out what is the mm, way the candidate do uh, or organize the ideas and what the vocabulary they use. So I absorb a lot of them. I don't I do any writing myself, but I examine them and I absorb the good points from them. And half the day were devoted to speaking by watching a lot of YouTube videos and trying to get as much English as I can to fill in my head and to make it automatic. So that is the, like, the mental exercise that I do every single day. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. I love that routine. And of course, our audience will also have a chance to basically see that routine again on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash fam, or, or the number eight, IELTS. And you guys can go and check out the routine over there. And of course, we have another routine for you uh, in store right here. And basically, it's going to be, guess what it is? We, I want us to go to space. I want us to go to space because basically, you know, we need to mentally exercise, but we also need to physically exercise. I think we should go to space together. What do you think? Space, that sounds dangerous. It's completely dangerous, but it's also completely safe because you're with me. <laughs> okay, I trust you. All right, let's go to space together. Let's go. Let's go. But you gotta go first, okay? You gotta go first, and you'll know why. You'll know why. This sounds dangerous to me. Okay. Going to be brave. Right. Should we? Stand there. You should stand there. Should we have the men in caps bring us our space utilities? Okay. Leave it there first. Leave it there first. Leave it there first. Okay. So we are right now on Earth, mm. and you're going to sit in this chair, which is basically our spaceship. Do you see the stars around you? Yeah. Looks a lot like out of space right now. I see a lot of stars, but I see one big star right here in front of me. Okay, you don't need to remind me of that. <laughs> so, okay, why don't you sit down? Okay. Sit down in our spaceship, and this is your space helmet. Wear your space helmet. And we're going to travel in space. You're on Earth right now, and we are going to travel to Neptune. And the way we're going to travel to Neptune is basically, I will ask you an IELTS question. With each correct answer, you get to fuel yourself to the next yeah. planet. Now in 30 seconds, in 60 seconds actually, mm. you will get a chance to answer five questions to fuel yourself from Earth. All right, to space. To space. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Ready, get set, go. Which word does not belong to the group? Boat, plane, deck chair, train. Deck chair. Correct. Something reserved in advance as a hotel accommodation or a seat on a plane. Hydrofoil, translate, contract, reservation. Reservation. Correct. You are now on Jupiter. Good. The cheapest type of seat on a plane or a train. First class, business class, post class, referee class. Business class. That is wrong. Huh? It's a must to visit something when you travel to Africa. Park, safari, lake, sea. Safari. Correct. You are now on Uranus. Last question. Something that offers basic information or instruction on travel. Newspaper, receptionist, guidebook, or mommy? Absolutely. Guidebook. Not mommy? Not mommy, no. You are absolutely correct. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. And you have made it to Neptune by answering four questions out of five correct in 45 seconds. Neptune, Congratulations. Baby. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to take that helmet off? All right. Now that I'm on planet, I don't need this anymore. Okay. That's perfect. You look great. You look great. And thanks for making it to Neptune. And basically, if you have to describe that whole traveling to space experiences in 
two adjectives or three adjectives, what will it be? Give me IELTS worthy adjectives. IELTS worthy. IELTS -worthy. Well, that's challenging. Uh, that would be uh, quite exciting. Um, one another word. I'm not sure if it's IELTS format or not, but it was fantastic. 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 You are fantastic. The whole experience was fantastic. Oh, and what, what's the third adjective? Um, a bit surprising, yes. Surprising. I see. So I think you're fantastic too, and <laughs> I'm so glad that you think the experience was fantastic. You know, you're a great person, great personality. Thank you. And, and I hope you all the best. But I want to ask you to do something with me what's before that? you go. Okay. You're going to give me a hug? I know you're not a hugger, but I am. So you're going to give me a hug? Okay, a hug then. All right. Thank you for being such a nice person. Thank you, thank you. All right, and that is basically it with our IELTS star this week. And I know you are very excited to be in space with us, but don't go anywhere. Stay in front of your monitor because the next section will be the idioms of the week. And we know you will love it. Stay tuned. Hit the road to leave to begin to travel on the road. For example, let's hit the road. We have a long way to go. Hello, I'm Lush, and I love wondering. Wonderlust, a great design to travel in the world about. For example, hello the world. I'm a wonderlust. Weekly on VTV7. The one and only talk show which not only maximizing your preparation for IELTS test to reach to 8 band score, but also maximizing your fun. In the next segment of BAM IELTS, we'll be a star who will turn our stage into a burlesque and also share her never been shared story about travel experience. Who is she? Let's turn on your volume a little bit and stay tuned for well, music on BAM IELTS. Hey guys, we're back here on Tama Else, and this is my special guest. Should yes. we say hi to the audience? Oh, hi, everyone. Hey. And I'm here with the mic, but I'm not the one who's singing, and she is the one who's <laughs> singing. My guest is the one who's singing. And uh, she is basically the second runner-up in Vietnam Idol 2012, and she's a very, very famous person. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to hear you sing. But I want to know basically your inspiration because this is something I ask you know, my audience all yes. the time and my guests all the time. So what inspires you, Bok Chun? Uh, many things inspire me, but mm -hmm. now I think that it's time for me to show my performance and then you gotta get out of my stage. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm so sorry, but then you will have a chair to sit, okay? We'll talk later. And when you want to dance, you can come here with me. <laughs> we'll you see that? about that. It's your stage. I leave it okay. all to you, okay? Yeah. Work your magic. Thank you so much. All right. Show a little more. Show a little less. Add a little smoke. Welcome to Burlesque. Everything you dream of. But you never can possess Nothing's what it seems Welcome to
<laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. It's so great to see you here. Yeah, you're welcome. Should we, should we sit down and talk a little bit on this burlesque Dama IELTS stage? Okay, we, I think we should, uh, should sit, have a seat. So we have we have some people to bring to bring the seats for us, and I, we call them okay. the men in caps. The men in caps welcome you. Men in caps? Where are you? <laughs> thank you. Men thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much for coming. Yeah, and you're and welcome. this is not a burlesque stage, it's yep. a damn IELTS stage. Yes. But basically, I we, think we can talk about all the things they talk about. about IELTS. In burlesque. <laughs> <laughs> not burlesque anymore, right? <laughs> not burlesque anymore. Yeah. So, what's, what's your favorite place to travel, Bacho? Uh, actually, um, I haven't discovered yet Hanoi, the, mm. the city that I'm living. Really? Yeah. Really? You know, yeah. Wow. Uh, I think that there are many. Even when I live here, near, nearly twenty years, but I think that there are many, many things and many places I haven't, I haven't been and haven't known. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Now that you mentioned Hanoi, yeah. I remember this experience. So Hanoi's weather is crazy. We all know Hanoi's weather is crazy. Oh my God! Yes. In February, things get wet. Mm -hmm. You see water on the on the floor for no reason because it's so yes. humid and yeah. stuff. The atmosphere in Hanoi is not very comfortable. Of for example, uh, to um, Ho Chi Minh City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, do you think the weather is one of the reasons why you know Hano Hanoians can be irritable? Like they, they may get irritable <laughs> easily because sometimes. Yeah. That's I just think, a question. I think that's the reason. One of the reasons. Yeah. And also. Do you get irritable? Uh, do you get irritated? Uh, no. Actually. Yeah. No. So yeah. you're very zitty, right? You're, very, yeah. you're a very easygoing person. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell us a little bit about your travel bag. You know, yeah. what do you pack when you travel? Is it oh, lipstick yeah. or ten, ten types For of lipstick? For sure, the makeup <laughs> kit. <laughs> That's what I do. I pack ten yeah. colors lipstick in my yeah. bag. What? Ten colors of lipstick. Ten colors of lipsticks? Yeah. Oh my, my god, bag. yes. And then nothing else? I just need nude, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my favorite color is nude. Um, a little bit orange or a little bit pink, but it's nude. Yeah. Maybe you should travel to, to, to Europe, girl. Yeah. Maybe you should tra travel to Spain and America. Oh, really? Oh, and then yeah. they'll be like, oh, your lips are so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, among all the types of travels, yeah. know, hitchhiking, or to go sightseeing, mm -hmm. to go on a cruise, or mm -hmm. to travel with family and friends, what is your favorite type of traveling to you? I think that uh, it's not depends on uh, where or where you, you, you travel, with whom you travel, yes. I really like traveling with my my, my, my friends, mm. actually my family, my family, my, my parents. <laughs> oh my God, they are uh, they are not old. They are very um, you know comfortable mm. to me. Um, but actually, uh, going with friends is much much more open. Mm. You can be yourself and you can do the very crazy things. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. 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 I love crazy things during yeah. my travels. Yeah. Okay, thank you girls for being on our show today. You're welcome. And uh, I hope that we will have a chance to travel Hanoi together. Yes, for sure. If you have time. Yes, if I have time and if you have time. So yeah. if we both have time. Yeah, we will arrange the time together. All right, thank okay. you. That's it for about Chim, guys. Did you guys like her? Of course, right? She's a singer, she's a famous singer, and despite you know, her busy schedules, she still needs to find some inspiration to add to her work. And one of, that way, one of those ways is basically to travel her city, even the city that she's been living in for 20 years. So, you know, uh, with regards to the travel session just now, I hope that you guys walk away and remember one vocabulary, and that is luggage. Luggage is the things that you bring with you on travels. It can be a suitcase, it can be in a bag, anything, as long as you bring, basically it, it stores all your daily necessities and you bring it on travels. So next up is a person to help add inspiration to your IELTS study routine and it is an expert from British Council and he's an IELTS expert. Let's see what he has to say guys. Coming up on Tham IELTS. I think I will give myself a... Uh... Have you ever wondered what will it be like if a celebrity is under the pressure of an IELTS speaking test? We put Harry Lou, an actor with a luring smile, into a hard situation. We get a 8 band score, what we can learn from Harry Lou and a real-time speaking session. We're gonna analyze with the tips, strategy and so much more on Thumb IELTS. 
All right, so we're here with Dan Ruel, our IELTS expert. And there's something I'm dying to ask you because sure. I know with every test, people get nervous and you know, people break down. Have you ever seen anybody that's so nervous that they either faint or they cry? Uh, it's never been that bad. Uh, of course, people get nervous in the, in the test, like any test. But uh, I think the examiner's job is to try and get the candidates to relax. Mm -hmm. uh, so most people are nervous in the first few questions, but I think they start to relax quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And now, now this, this basically brings me to another point because a lot of our celebrities, you know, they are in the spotlight and they deal with stress right there at the moment all the time, mm -hmm. on the spot all the time. And so let's see, we're going to put some of our celebrities to the IELTS test and see if they are nervous. Okay. You want to look at that with me? Let's go. All right, let's go. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So we're going to start speaking part one uh, with questions about jobs. Uh, so what do you do? Uh, actually, I'm a little CEO. I'm just kidding. I have my own ice cream shop in District 1 and District 10. And, uh, and do you like your job? Of course, I love it because uh, I bring it from when I travel to Korea. I really love it and I bring it back to Vietnam. And what do you see yourself doing in 10 years' time? That is such a long-term plan. Uh, Basically, I hope I can over-franchise after I have my good SOP. Uh, I offer my franchise to Southeast Asia. When it comes to work, what are your strengths? My strengths... I'm a Taiwanese which grew up in Vietnam, so I think I have an international background. I speak three kinds of languages, which I think can help me in my workplace. And I adapt in every situation very fast. Okay. So we're going to move on to speaking part two. Sure. Um, so I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Mm -hmm. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Sure. OK, so here is some paper and a pencil. And here is your topic. Thank you. So you have one minute to prepare. Starting now. I think I'm ready. Okay, so you have two minutes to speak and I'll tell you when the time is up. So you may begin. Okay, if I have a chance to start another business, uh, I think I would like to open a restaurant because nowadays, although economic is going down, so people will like spend less money on entertainment kind of thing. So, uh, but people will not like stop eating. So I think I will open a restaurant for them to like Eat. Because nowadays people spend more time on walking, so they will not like cook at home like often than before. So the skill I require to start a business, basically I have we need to have some knowledge about our product. Then and then we have to like have some accounting skills to start up a company. And then for like the outflow, we have to do some marketing to pro promote our product in order to attract customers. And inside the company, we have to be good at marketing. Uh, no, sorry, accounting. Oh, what I mean actually is uh, management. To manage our finance, uh, products, logistics, and then our SOP, standard operating procedures. And then after, what will my life change after I have a business, of course, we we'll have less free time because we have to stick with our business. So, really focus on the business, spend less time with our family, which is pretty bad, and spend less time with our hobbies. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I'm panic. Take these uh, paper and uh, pen sure. back. Thank you. 
Okay, so in part two we were talking about uh, a business that you'd like to start. Yeah. So in part three we're going to uh, talk further about jobs and business. So do you think that it's uh, easy or difficult for people to run mm. their own business? To me it's absolutely difficult to have our own business. If you're just going to have a own business and you're not really focused on it, it's, of course it will be easy, but if you look far you have a long-term plan, like like what I just say, I want to franchise to Southeast Asia. I would like to have a good SOP, and I would like to have every make everything detailed, so I can convince people to invest on me. And do you think it's a good idea to go into business with your family? This one is also interesting because, to my own opinion, I I don't think so because, uh, we are different generation already. So sometimes we want to do things by our way. But since our parents, although they have more life experience than us, they want to keep up safety. So we want to, we want to take risks. And how has the internet changed the way we do business? The internet, to me, the internet saved a lot of costs because nowadays people use a lot of internet, every kid's out there using smartphone all the day. So, and uh, compared to those television commercial, the internet, internet commercial is much more cheaper. So if we are good at using internet, building websites, then we can uh, marketing our business effectively. Thank you very much. That is Thank the you. end of the speaking session. All right, Dan. Yeah. What did you think? What did you think about that performance? I, I was quite impressed overall. Um, I think he's a very fluent speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, he's able to speak uh, quite long answers and he doesn't stop and pause too often. Mm -hmm. So I thought quite fluent and pronunciation I thought was very clear. And um, so what are some of the things that um, an examiner may look for in a speaking exam? Uh, so basically four categories. Uh, the first category is fluency. So mm -hmm. can you speak not too slowly and not stopping too often? Mm -hmm. Uh, the second is vocabulary, so can you use some less common words, mm -hmm. uh, some, some precise vocabulary. The third one's grammar, so mm -hmm. can you use complex grammar without too many mistakes. Mm -hmm. And the fourth is pronunciation. Uh -huh. So I thought for Harry, I thought he was, he was quite strong on all four. I think the, the area to improve probably would be grammar. Mm -hmm. I did notice uh, some, some fairly frequent mistakes, but yeah. nothing too serious. Right, right. When I was listening to him, you know, what I, what I really loved is, is his expression of emotions and mm. how he asked the examiner back. Now, is that something common you see in the speaking exam? To Definitely. Ask the examiner? Uh, I think a lot of candidates are afraid to ask uh, clarification. So, for mm -hmm. example, if they don't understand the question, I think a lot of people are afraid to ask the examiner to repeat, but it's completely okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and in part three, the, the examiner can actually change the words of the question. Mm -hmm. So if the candidate doesn't, doesn't understand, they can uh, get it asked in a different way. Let's see, let's see how many points you think you got. Sure. Harry, how many points did you think you got? I think I will give myself a seven. Yeah, seven is okay. Okay, Dan, do you think, do you think he achieved a seven? I think he's being very modest. Uh, I, think, uh, I think he should set his goals a little bit higher, actually. Oh, that's great, that's great to hear. And so, um, if he were to do something differently, what do you think he would have done differently? Um, I guess two things I'd recommend for Harry is, uh, number one, the first part maybe to explain his answers a little bit longer, a bit more detail in the first part. Um, he did get much better in part two and three, but I noticed at the beginning they were a little bit short. Uh, and the second thing is maybe to try and use a, a wider range of vocabulary. He often explains his ideas, yes. but perhaps he could use a more precise word to to explain the same thing. Right, so what were some of the vocabulary that he could have used to make his answer stronger? I think he was quite good in using um, business-related vocabulary. So he talked about um, standard operating procedures and mm -hmm. uh, franchise and, and other words. Mm -hmm. But I think he could maybe use some more idiomatic vocabulary. Some, some idioms would help. Mm -hmm. So for example, when he talked about Pepsi's core product, right. he might say, this is Pepsi's bread and butter. Uh -huh. which means the same thing as a core product. Right. Or, you know, when he's talking about starting up a business takes time, you might use an idiom like, Rome wasn't built in a day, mm -hmm. to show that something takes a lot of time and effort. But Harry, if you were to do this differently, how would you have done it differently? Uh, I think I, need, I just need to adjust my, my feeling because I was too panicked. So I think I just need to take a 
deep breath and get ready and be relaxed. That's all. You have to take a deep breath, relax. Good advice. Yeah. And <laughs> prepare well. Exactly. Have idioms in your in your vocabulary. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, in, in terms of your experience, you know, your, your expertise, what what kind of preparation should a student have for the IELTS? I think for Vietnamese candidates, uh, most candidates already have the language, but I think uh, a lot of candidates don't have the, the the fluency, so maybe they're not comfortable using English. So I think one thing that would help a lot is is trying as much as possible to use English uh, in in a range of situations. You mentioned that, and and I remember something that's very interesting because some people have told me that in order to prepare, they will sit in front of YouTube and they will talk to themselves as if they were talking to an examiner and. And sometimes they'll stand in front of mir the mirror mm -hmm. to also talk to themselves as well. Yeah, and yeah. the shower too. It's a great place to practice. You know. It's a great place to practice and to remember lyrics as well. Of course. Yeah. So we're, we've come to our next section, and it's basically the tips, 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 and tips section, where you will get a chance to have our expert, your, our IELTS expert, tell you a little bit about what you can do and how you can improve in each of the section. So this week's section will be the writing section. So stay tuned. We'll have it in the next clip. Here are the benefits of tourism. Uh, from your personal perspective, you might say tourism is a popular leisure activity. So tourists can relax, have fun, recharge their batteries, experience different customs and cultures like sightseeing, sunbathing, visiting monuments, maybe tasting new cuisine. And I think travel opens our minds so you can broaden your horizons. And on another level, on an economic perspective, the tourism industry is vital for some countries. People rely on tourism for their income, and tourism attracts investments from governments and companies. It creates employment due to demand for goods and services, such as hotels and entertainment. It also helps to improve the standard of living. The negatives of tourism. From an environmental perspective, tourism can have a negative impact on the environment. Excessive building, like roads, hotels, etc., destroys natural habitats and spoils the landscape. Tourism also creates pollution and waste. It puts pressure on local resources, such as food, water, and energy. And on an economic perspective, tourism may create a rise in the cost of living, prices of goods and services may go up, and tourists can buy second homes. All of this can affect local people. From a cultural perspective, local traditions may be lost. Uh, traditional jobs and skills die out, like farming and fishing, and local people are forced to work in the tourist industry. On Tama IELTS, we always want to hear your voice. And every week, we will have a Voice of the Week section where you can send us your voice materials, be it your video, be it your recording. We prefer video. So take a selfie and take a video and speak to us as if you're speaking to an IELTS, listen, um, an IELTS examiner. And we'd love to see how you do. But basically, to start off this week, we are going to show you an example of how this can be done. So be excited and stay glued to your screen. Traveling. Don't you I love traveling as much as I do? I actually spend a lot of money for travel uh, with my friends, my family, people that I love. It's a great way to celebrate a memorable time. There's another way to enjoy yourself. You can just do it by yourself. You can just go solo travel. Actually, there are so many people freaked out even think of that idea going traveling alone because probably there are so many situations you really need a hand to help you out. For example, one of my very dear friends, he was traveling in Paris, the mecca of romance, and he gets stolen all of his stuff, even his passport. So if I was in his shoe, there was nothing romance about it at all. Let me tell you. However, fears are made to be confronted, aren't they? I was traveling alone by myself all over the state and I have the best time of my life. As most of the thing in life, attitude matters. It just depends on how you think of it. Solo traveling actually helped me out a lot with improving my ability to survive, of course, and confident, making new friends with people that you never ever know from around this world. So if you are not too timid, your health is not confident, you can just give it a try and see how amazing could it be. 
That was very enjoyable. It's very creative. That was, what, what did you like about that? What did you like about that? Uh, very creative. Uh, but in terms of language, I think he's really good at emphasizing his key words. His, his word stress was excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very good uh, intonation and, you know, some idioms as well. So I thought he was a very, very good speaker. And how can a person basically utilize the internet or utilize everything, the smart technology that we have now to, to basically make their IELTS speaking skills better, to practice at home? I think it's quite easy now. I mean, first of all, just recording yourself and listening back to your answers is, is a really good way to notice some of the mistakes you're making that you, don't, you might not notice just when you're speaking with a friend. So recording yourself and listening again uh, it can be very useful for finding those mistakes. But I mean, in terms of finding a person to use English with, like I said before, sometimes for Vietnamese candidates, it's difficult to find somebody to have a conversation with in English. So it's so easy just to find somebody on Skype uh, to, who also wants to practice their English for IELTS. Mm -hmm. And you can easily just have a, a free phone call. And uh, the good thing about speaking with somebody outside of Vietnam is it really forces you to use English, which yeah, is good. That's right. So my, la my last question for you is basically on the, on the issue of traveling, mm -hmm. on, the, on the topic of traveling. And what's one of your craziest traveling experiences? Crazy. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think probably I went to Laos with my brother a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a town called Vang Vieng. Mm -hmm. And it's famous for, there's a beautiful river and you can rent a tube, a big tire, and you can go float down the river. And uh, along the way, they have uh, people selling beer Lao oh. for, for quite cheap. I love beer Lao. It's great, it's great. It's great. So every few minutes, we'd stop and have a beer. And we stopped too many times and it got dark. And uh, we actually had to take a boat all the way back to the town because so we drank too many beers. You weren't able to take your tire back. No, unfortunately. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Dan, for being on the show. And uh, if you were to summarize basically five vocabulary that's going to be very useful for people studying for IELTS with rela relating to the, issue, uh, to the topic of travel, what will it be? Five words. I'd say perspective. So travel can give you a different perspective on life. Uh, uh, engaging, so you can visit an engaging city uh, like Paris, like our friend talked about there. Um, mindset, so travel can change your mindset, so the way you, you think about the world. Mm -hmm. Four, I'd say hmm, jet set, mm -hmm. so jet set it describes a person who always travels around the world every week traveling to a different place, mm -hmm. I'd say as a jet setter. Mm -hmm. So I guess my, my word I would say, in my own opinion, it'll be redefined. Yeah. Because one not only redefines its personal experience, but at the same time, traveling, it's not just about people traveling from one place to another. It's also about objects. Mm -hmm. So you, we've seen you know, Japanese cuisine traveling all over to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And you know, Harry, our guest today also, he wants to basically make his food travel all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so traveling itself is also, it can be redefined in its own definition. Definitely. Yeah. That's good. Dan, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having thank, me. Thank you. I had a great time talking to you. It was a good time. And I hope we get to see each other again and the audience gets to see you again. I'd love to be back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, 8 IELTS is an interactive show, as I've said, and I will stress this over and over again because we want you to talk to us. We want you to send in your voice of the week, so basically record yourself with whatever personal smart devices you have. Record yourself, send it to us, and you can also go on to our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash IELTS to send us your writing sample and to send us your questions because we will have a whole community up there to help you achieve your score. We've come to the end of the first episode of Tham IELTS. Did you like it? I totally did. And of course, make sure to join us again, us again many, many other times to hear more information, more expert tips, and of course, more juicy stories from our guests and they will be celebrities as well so i'm totally excited for it and i hope you join me again and for now goodbye and i'll see you next week ciao 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 good job very good job Come on. books are so important so i need to bring these books home because i need to do some research for the show